Today we are checking out a weird and unique Video 8 camcorder by Pentax. This is the Pentax PV-EM100A. I'll tell you a little bit about this camera and then we'll go around and look at the physical features on it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any specs on it. It has some issues and I'm not able to show any test footage. So let's check out this extremely weird and unique camcorder from the early 90s and see if it's the right camcorder for your camera collection. Hey there, welcome back to my camera collection. If you're new around here, we like to check out old school retro camcorders from the 80s, 90s, 2000s and mid 2000s. So if you're into retro tech and retro camcorders, maybe consider subscribing. And yeah, I got myself a new little mic right here. Well, it's the same mic, it's just a nice little mic stand that I got here. You probably seen in my uh, ZR60 repair video. Hopefully this sounds a lot better and it doesn't look super awkward. I think it looks kind of cool, I like it. And it gets the mic nice and close to my mouth. So hopefully you guys enjoy the audio as well. But yeah, we're checking out the Pentax PV-EM100A. I don't know if there was any other uh, successor models to this. I wasn't able to find any kind of information on it. I scoured the internet for specs. I couldn't find any user manuals or repair manuals or nothing on it. I couldn't find any websites talking about it. I couldn't find any YouTube videos about this camcorder. There was one that I had to, I, I Googled it just to see if I could get a different uh, search on it. And I found there was a video that was on YouTube that was like eight or nine seconds long and it was just like a, one short little video clip of like this camcorder pointed towards a newspaper maybe. So yeah, I, I don't have any information on this camera at all. Where it came from, I got it off of eBay. I was just browsing on there. That's generally what I do when I look for camcorders. I just, I browse quite a bit and I just stumbled across this one and I was like, what is that thing? And so I looked at it and I think the seller was selling it for like $30 untested. I think I ended up putting it on my watch list and he actually sent me an offer for like 20 or $25 or something like that. And I kind of wanted to jump on it just because I felt like it was a, a rare find and I kind of had a high expectation that it was going to have some form of an issue. Long story short, it does have an issue. The capacitors are bad on it. I tried hooking it up to my ClearClick video to digital 3.0 just to see if I could get an image on a screen and see what it would do. If anybody has any information on this camcorder, like let me know in the comments because this is such a weird and unique camcorder. It is a Video 8 camcorder and it's from 1990. That's what it says here on the bottom. August of 1990. So this thing is pretty old. It's probably one of the older ones we've actually reviewed on this channel. Kind of a cool camera. Like I said, I don't have any specs to give you guys. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I couldn't find anything on it. So I guess we'll just go around and check out the physical features on it and kind of go from there. So yeah, you can see that it's a really weird shape. To me, it's kind of like a binocular shape. Like you'd hold it up and like hold it like this. To, to view through it. And I guess you could use like your left eye or your right eye, but I mean, the the viewfinder, man, it like, look how big the viewfinder is. <laughs> that thing goes straight up 90 degrees and I guess you could mount it on a tripod and use it, but this thing is just so goofy and it powers on and everything. Open the tape deck when you want it to. And I think I even tried putting a tape in it, but it showed a, a flashing eject icon when I put it in there. So I don't know if that is due to the uh, bad capacitors. So anyway, we'll start off with the lens here. I'm gonna say the lens thread diameter on this is a 37 millimeter. I am going to try putting my 37 millimeter Optica fisheye on it and see if it fits, because I'm actually kind of curious. And I want to turn that down. Okay, cool. All right, so let's see. That's not lined up, but that looks, that looks so funny. Man, I wish this camera didn't have bad capacitors. This thing would be so fun to film with. Oh well, maybe someday. So, okay, yeah, 37 millimeter lens threads on it. And then I believe it has a manual focus ring here. Yeah, so it's kind of rubbery. You can actually grab it and it only twists left and right so far. And it kind of gives me the same vibe as older VHS cameras, like my review that I did on the Panasonic PV420. I'll leave a link in the cards above if you want to check that out. But it has a, a manual zoom and a manual focus on it. And you can only move it left and right 
counterclockwise or clockwise is only so far, so it doesn't just sit and spin. So it's not digitally, it's mm, mechanically, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, it does have a six times optical zoom on it, and it also has digital autofocus. So I guess that was a, a big thing. The aperture is an F11, and that's at about 66 millimeters, and then it has a macro of one and two. Hopefully I read that right. And then you have manual iris as well. So I guess manual exposure. Exposure. So you got this little wheel here and that is how you can adjust the iris on it. So you can close it all the way or you can have it open. And then there's a little green dot on the top side at like 12 o'clock. And I'm gonna guess that that's probably auto exposure. You have a up close or I guess a close up button. I'm gonna guess that that's probably the macro that it was talking about. So you got a button back behind the close up button and it says INT record. Not exactly sure what that means. I'm gonna guess it means like intelligent record or something. If you know what that means, let me know in the comments. I'm probably having a brain fart because I'm sitting here scratching my head going, INT record, what does that mean? I I don't know why, I, I can't figure that out. Um, and then you have your shutter, so you can manually adjust your shutter. And then you have manual focus on or off. That's your button right there. And then you can put it in auto mode with this switch here. Obviously you've got to put it in manual mode to access all the, the manual functions here on the side. And then you have scene search. So when you're in record mode, you can probably push the minus on that and it'll record back to the first frame that you just recorded. Or you can fast forward it by pushing the plus button and go to the last frame of what you just recorded, if that makes sense. You got your power zoom here. I'm gonna guess, I think it's probably a one speed zoom. So as far, it, it goes one speed zooming in and one speed zooming out. And then you have a little switch down here and that is your AV in or out. So you can have audio video signal going in or you can have an audio video signal coming out of this. And then there's this little flap here and that is your audio video signals. So you got your video and then your left audio or your mono audio because back in 1990 they didn't really have TVs and camcorders that were stereo. It, everything was mostly mono. So on the back side here you got some buttons here for your uh, title. Uh, you can turn your title on and off. The gray button, I don't, it doesn't say anything on it. I'm assuming that that probably has something to do with the title accessing stuff and then you have a, a memory button so you can access titles that you've saved and then I assume that you can change the font, not font, I assume you can choose different colors for your font because it also says color on there. Like I said with the viewfinder it, man it it's got a huge range on it. Honestly, that might be the longest viewfinder I think I've ever seen. But you have a little focus wheel on it here, so you can adjust it to your eyesight. And then, let's see, you can pull it out to uh, kind of magnify it to your eye, and then you can kind of close it so that way when you put it like in your bag or its case, I assume it might have came with, it kind of folds up a little tighter. But you can do that, and then it locks into place, and there you go. A lot of uh, older video eight and and VHSC camcorders kind of had this little viewfinder setup like this. Most viewfinders back in this era of camcorders didn't have colored viewfinders. But I'm actually kind of surprised that it actually works. You probably can't see it on here, but you'll see it in the B-roll. The screen, not screen, the viewfinder is actually cracked right here, the body of it. So I don't know if this was dropped at some point or what, but there's actually quite a bit of damage around the body of this camera and you'll, you'll see that as we go. Let's see, on the back side here, this is where your battery goes. So it uses the same kind of batteries as like a lot of uh, Sony Video 8 camcorders like the, the TR models and early TRV models. You can get those like uh, one batteries. I have one charging right now, but um, there's a battery that you can get and one side you can use for VHSC, and then you can flip it over 180 degrees and use it with uh, Video 8. So I definitely recommend getting one of those batteries. I'll leave one in the description below, along with a compatible charger. But you also got your power switch. Let's not poke you guys in the eye there. <laughs> Um, your power switch is right here, so um, moving it to the left turns the camera on going into record mode or camera mode and then moving it to the right goes back to video mode, which is playback mode, VCR mode. Along with that, it might be the one and only orange record button I think I've ever seen. 
Um, most uh, record buttons are red, but this one's kind of a yellowish orange. So kind of interesting. And then it kind of has a little spot where you can place your thumb at, I guess, to, to rest your thumb while you're recording. Let's see, let's go up on top here. You got some buttons that is your date and time settings there. So you have uh, adjust, date, reset, memory counter to uh, set the uh, internal clock on it. So you can have your little timestamp you know, down here in the corner, or maybe for you guys, it's over here. You know what I'm saying? You got a little screen right here that kind of tells you, I think, battery information, any kind of errors that it's having, it'll tell you to eject if you are recording or the video is stopped, and then how far along you are on the tape. You're tape information. And then of course you got your playback functions here. You got rewind, play, fast forward, stop, pause, and record. So record is if you have a uh, video source coming into the camera, you can record video onto the tape from an outside source. And then you come around over to the side here and you have a open switch here. So it'll actually uh, open the tray up and the tray actually moves, the tape tray, tape deck moves out this way. And then you got obviously your pan strap there, which actually is in pretty decent shape. I assume this camera has probably sat in storage for a while, maybe in like a box or a shed or something, because it's kind of dirty and gross and very scratched up. But you do get a lovely external mic plug in there. The casing in the body is pretty broken right there though. And now on the front, you have your mono microphone right there, the little metal mesh, if you will. And then I think it has a infrared receiver right there. So you, this thing actually came with a infrared remote so you could record and zoom and all that without having to touch the camera. To me, this is a weir really weird spot, but it's got a ear phone jack or a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, if you will. And it's kind of weird that they put it on the front instead of on the side where the 3.5 millimeter microphone jack is. I, you'd think that they'd swap them around. I don't know. It just kind of seems weird to have the earphone jack on the front when you would most likely be behind the camera listening to the audio and then have the microphone on the front. But there's no uh, cold shoe for this camcorder, so no, not really anywhere to mount a mic for it, so you'd have to have some form of a, I guess like an interview mic. Yeah, I think that's mostly everything. Let's look at the bottom here. So you have a switch right here and you can turn the edit on or off. I assume this had some form of uh, limited uh, editing functions on it. I'm not really sure how you'd even uh, access those, but there's that switch. You have your quarter inch tripod threads right there in the middle. To be honest, you don't even need to put it on a tripod. I mean, it's even got these little, actually, they're still even on there. Wow, look at that. See if you guys can see it. There's four little rubber feet on it and they're all in the four corners. So when you set it down on something, it's actually got some grip and you know, it doesn't slide around. So that's kind of interesting. So this thing was actually capable of just being placed really anywhere. Or if you wanted to put it on a tripod, I guess you could. And then the last thing is your battery release switch is here on the bottom. And I think that just about does it. Obviously you got your little window screen here so you can see if the tape is moving or not. But I'm gonna see if I can take that battery off the charger and see if we can get the, the tape deck to open, huh? Okay, I got my VHSC slash video eight, high eight, battery here. Okay, yeah, so this pops up like that. And then you have your eject button in here, that little blue button. So it's it's very Sony feeling in my opinion. And I bet this was probably manufactured in the same factory as the old Sony Video 8 camcorders. So it's probably why the capacitors are bad as well. There you go, there's your uh, tape door there. Uh, yeah, it doesn't accept tapes. Well, it, it, it'll it it'll retract the tape and load it up and all that, but it'll flash the eject icon at me. So it doesn't want to read the tapes. So I don't know what I could do for that. That was kind of cool sounding. <laughs> That's pretty much everything on it. So really the, the most broken parts of this camera is, well, the capacitors. It doesn't want to read a tape. The viewfinder body here is cracked. The ear, no, the, the microphone 
jack here, the body around it is broken, and then a little bit of the, the casing for the infrared receiver is broken as well. Just the pieces chipped off. So that, that just gives me the, the, the vibe that this was just kind of tossed into a box and then kind of forgotten about for 25 years. Oh yeah, one, more, one last thing. There is a little compartment, let's see, right there, and that is your little, I don't know, what is it, the 20... 2016 battery or whatever that keeps the internal clock rolling on it or your nickel size looking battery that will uh, keep the internal clock going so yeah that's uh, pretty much all we got for this little guy or I guess big guy so I wish I could show you guys some test footage that comes out of it because I think this would be really cool to film with and try out but the uh, capacitors are, are bad in it I don't think I'll be selling this camera if I do I'll probably sell it for parts if anybody out there wants it but I haven't found there there were a few of these on eBay for sale shortly after I bought this and I actually just looked today just before recording this video and I, there's no none of these for sale out there so I don't know if they're rare or if they're kind of a sought after camcorder but kind of a weird camcorder it's very binocular looking very odd shape I would put this in the bracket of camcorders that is uh, if you guys have seen my reviews on the the Sony CCD SC5 the what was it? The JVC SV3 and the Canon MV1, I think it was. The the Obtura MV1. Those were really like just some goofy looking camcorders. So I I don't know. I'm going to I I put this camcorder in that bracket of camcorders. It's just it's super weird. The SC5 was a video 8, the SV3 was a VHSC because it was JVC. And the Canon Optura MV1 was mini DV. And then this one is obviously a video eight as well. So yeah, kind of a weird camcorder. And I'm gonna put it in that category of just weird, goofy cameras. But honestly, these are like some of my favorite cameras to check out because they're just so goofy looking. Like what made Pentax want to make a video camera like this? And to be honest, I don't even really see many video cameras out there that look like this. I, I don't really see much from Pentax anyway. So it's just, it's kind of weird. I wonder if Sony made their own model of this and then Pentax just used the body for it and just slapped their, their logo on it. I don't know. But I mean, it's weird because it's it's more of a like left-handed camera. It seems like every camera you, you put in your hand through the hand strap like this and you hold it and you would have, you know, obviously your record buttons here but then your zoom rocker would be up here. So you'd use it with, you know, you could hold the camera one-handed and be able to record. But this one you have to hold two-handed, like freaking binoculars, and the zoom rocker is there with your left hand. So I assume that you would use it with your left eye. I mean, you could use it with both eyes, but I don't know. Just what a weird contraption. I, like I said, I can't find any information out there on it. So I'd like to, uh, Hear from you guys if you know anything about this camcorder. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. And if you want to check out some other funky camcorders that have been made during the 90s, tap or click the screen up above. And if you want to check out my previous video, tap or click the screen above for that video as well. If you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe because we talk about old school retro camcorders almost on a weekly basis. And on that note, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.